Hello everyone. So this week I've been working on Emerging Technologies and Cybersecurity C844. I've passed my first paper, I passed that yesterday. And then I am now working on my second paper. Actually, I've submitted it. I'm now waiting on it to be graded. So I took two weeks off two weeks off of college. And then it was kind of a rough start getting back in, so I was didn't have a whole week to write the uh two papers and i did have to this is saturday so it did bleed into saturday writing the two papers but i've actually written them both in less than a week so i'm pretty happy about that first one passed first try the second one as i said still being graded so for the first one i took screenshots for nmap i want to say i took about like 10 11 screenshots I just took uh i used the nmap not the terminal I used the gui because i'm a sissy and I just took screenshots of all the open ports and the host and then the typology. And they seemed to like that. I did a little paragraph on each of the vulnerabilities and then on the anomalies. Now I was confused with the vulnerabilities and the anomalies because it seems like kind of the same thing, but it's not. Vulnerability is like a bad protocol, but anomaly is like a brute force attack. That's one of the things I wrote or like a spoofing. It's like a a string of packets that indicate something bad going on, like an attack. So that was a little tricky for me to pin down what exactly they meant, but it's actually like suspicious packets. Like an HTTP protocol is insecure, but it's not an anomaly. So that was a tricky nuance that I didn't get right away. For the Wireshark, you don't have to take screenshots. I don't even know if they would let you take screenshots. That might fail you. But you just have to say what capture it's from. There, I did anomaly for each capture. And just the packets. So, I, like I said, he sent a bunch of... The attacker sent a bunch of sin attacks. Right? And so I did actually three vulnerabilities. Because that's only how much as you had to do. So if there's a hard one, if you see like four or five, just like move on to the next one and don't focus on a hard one. Just get it done as fast as possible. Just move on to an easier one. And then with the anomalies, I could have just done three, but I thought I might fail one. So I wanted to put an extra one in there for buffer so I could remove it if I failed it. I actually passed first try with all four of those in. So maybe in the future, you guys should just do three. Uh, there's four captures. Each one contains at least one vulnerability. So just skip over the one that's harder for you. There's one vulnerability, probably would have saved time. Sorry, anomaly. That's different than a vulnerability. One anomaly that was more difficult for me. I probably should have skipped over that one and just done three. And now for the second one, it seemed pretty easy. I've submitted it. I have not passed it yet. But basically, I just copy and pasted like everything in there. So we're just writing about imaginary like possible vulnerabilities for this given scenario. It's a very vague scenario. So it's pretty much just like pick two vulnerabilities that could ex exist on a uh, WLAN or WLAN, or whatever, how you want to say that word, which is like a huge range. So I just went to like this government website because we know we can all trust the government, right? I just like copy and pasted in the vulnerabilities and reworded it. Um, it wasn't quite plagiarism because it didn't say it was plagiarism. They checked for that. And I did reword it to be more specific. I did reword it to like to a slightly different audience to be more specific to this company and kind of put it in my own wording. I did try using a paraphraser AI because, you know, I love my new gadgets. That didn't actually work. I took most of my sources from one site and then I got my regulation. I pulled from the ebook and then uh, a few other things I pulled from another government uh, document. In the template that they send you, they actually show you like sources for where you can get sources to support the claims you're going to make. So that's that's pretty handy. I actually didn't end up using all of them. Sometimes I just looked it up myself. You know, look it up, copy and paste it, reword it, copy and pasting. It just gives you like a mental framework to write. So you don't go blank. You just reword. You kind of know what it's supposed to be like. You just reword it until you get a low enough similarity score and it makes sense to your specific case and organization and writing style because you don't want to like change persons between each paragraph. Um, like... You, him, they, company. Like, if you keep saying different things, it's going to be incoherent. I don't know if you'll be able to pass with that. So you guys won't be able to bang us out in a week, especially if you're a little better than me. Maybe this video will help you get it done a little faster. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, 
Então, atualzinho, tio. Vai.